1950s airplane fire tests. The post-World War II era was the golden age of commercial aviation. However, a significant concern was that of fire during and after an airplane crash. The crash fire issue was of direct interest to the aircraft industry, to the aircraft manufacturers, and to increasingly successful commercial airline operators like American, United, Transworld Airlines, or TWA, and Pan American. In 1947, the Committee on Operating Problems tasked the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, known as NACA, with how to control or prevent airplane fires. Coincidentally, NACA would later become NASA. By 1949, NACA had obtained 50 twin-engine cargo planes from the U.S. Air Force that had been used during the famous Berlin Airlift. These were tired and beaten, yet hardy aircraft, and so were perfect for the crash test needed. In fact, the airplanes were so war-torn that they were flown to Cleveland with their doors open so that the pilots could jump out if necessary. Ravenna, Ohio was chosen as the site for the full-scale crash tests. It had been used by the Army as an armaments depot during the war. The construction of a 2,000-foot runway at the Ravenna site was needed just for the tests. Each test crash was carefully choreographed and was staged to be survivable, since the emphasis was on fires that could break out. In the test, a plane would take off and be landed by remote control and ran into a barrier that tore off the landing gear and damaged the propellers. The plane would hurtle through rows of poles, ripping open wing tanks and setting off fires. The airplane was painted white and the fuel dyed red for ease of photography. The goal of the tests was to uncover the mechanism of fire during and after a crash, as well as the exact nature of the structural breakup of the airplane. Some old myths were busted due to the tests. For example, the mistaken belief of some pilots that turning off the ignition before a crash prevented fire. It didn't. Also dashed was the belief that fuels with low volatility were safer than conventional gasoline. They were not. By 1957, countless tests resulted in fire-related engineering analyses perfect for turbo-powered jets. However, airlines were under no obligation to make the scientifically proven safety changes. NACA failed to entice them or the manufacturers to incur the added expense of the system, even with a motion picture film convincingly narrated by esteemed ABC newscaster David Brinkley. Operation Smash Hit Britain's nuclear industry had a tough PR dilemma in the 1980s. How do you prove to the public that a train crash involving nuclear waste would actually be safe? A nuclear flask is a shipping container that's used to transport active nuclear materials between a nuclear power station and spent fuel reprocessing facilities. Each shipping container is designed to maintain its integrity under normal transportation conditions and during hypothetical accident conditions. A flask must, of course, protect its contents against damage from external factors, such as those due to impact or fire. They must also contain their contents from leakage, both for physical leakage and radioactive shielding. But the British public wasn't convinced that these flasks were safe while in transit. The industry sought to prove that on July 17, 1984. A mock train crash was needed. The old Dalby test track is a section of a closed line near Milton Mowbray in the English Midlands. The track had been retained by British Railways for the testing of new locomotives. A large flask with nuclear waste was placed on its side across a piece of the track so as to derail a train. A 239-ton train formed of an inactive 1960s locomotive and a short line of 1950s carriages was accelerated without a driver over several miles of countryside to 100 miles per hour. The photo shows the high-speed collision between the train and the large nuclear flask. Millions in the UK watched the collision live on TV. Both the flatbed wagon carrying it and the locomotive were more or less destroyed in the massive collision but the nuclear flask was completely intact. The flask had contained water and steel rods in place of radioactive material. Even hit at 100 miles per hour, the flask sustained minimal superficial damage without compromising its integrity. The flask had lost just 0.29 of its 100 pounds of pressure, which equates to 0.02 bar, or practically nothing. Furthermore, the flask was heated to temperatures of over 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit to prove safety in a fire. 
Operation Smash Hit was considered a smashing success. The nuclear industry had proven its point to the British public. The F-4 Phantom Crash Test The potential of an airplane terrorist attack on a nuclear facility has troubled governments for decades. This explains why the U.S. government tested and filmed an F-4 Phantom jet, fully loaded at 41,500 pounds, being launched and slammed directly into a concrete wall at nearly 500 miles per hour. Sandia National Laboratories undertook the test at its rocket sled facility in Albuquerque, New Mexico, on April 19, 1988. A fully functional F-4 was used in the impact test. Only the gears and flaps at the main wings were partly removed and replaced by a carriage structure and sleds. Sandia Labs used water in the plane's fuel tanks to simulate the mass of jet fuel, because according to the lab, quote, the effects of fire following such a collision was not a part of the test and crashed head-on into a reinforced 12-foot-thick concrete wall at almost 500 miles per hour. It perfectly imitated a nose-first, high-speed crash of a plane into a nuclear facility's concrete walls. The plane was obliterated into literally millions of tiny pieces. Such was the force of the impact. The only sections which remained intact were the small sections of wing which missed the target entirely. Conversely, damage to the wall was minuscule. The wall's maximum scar depth was 2.36 inches, while structural damage sustained was negligible. The force of the impact did hurl the concrete block back 5.97 feet. The test proved that reinforced concrete could stop a plane inflicting major damage by hitting a nuclear facility. As with other such crash tests, some questioned the findings and even contested the physical evidence in the photos thereof. Skeptics noted that the jet didn't appear to slow down in the footage, they also note how its fuselage didn't crumble, its cockpit window didn't crack or shatter, and its wings and tail fins didn't jolt forward after it started crashing into the fortified barrier. The Boeing 727 crash. An unmanned Boeing 727-200, filled with crash test dummies and scientific instruments, crash landed on purpose into the ground. The intentional crash occurred on April 27, 2012, near Mexicali in Baja, California, Mexico. The test crash was done for a TV documentary for the UK's Channel 4, Discovery Channel, and Germany's Pro Sieben Channel, the aim of which was to recreate a serious but survivable airliner crash with a real aircraft. On board were numerous force gauges to measure the shock upon landing. There were also 15 crash test dummies coated in grease paint to signal their trajectory at the moment of impact. Both the interior and exterior of the plane had multiple cameras to film it all. Footage shows the plane flying in low and shallow. The jetliner hit the ground at 140 miles per hour, with a descent rate of 1,500 feet per minute. In addition to the cockpit fully detaching from the cabin, the only pieces that came undone were the trim around the main cabin and the emergency oxygen mask that deployed. Surprisingly, many of the overhead bins stayed secured. An interesting finding was that passengers at the front of the plane were indeed more likely to get hurt than those at the back. Many of the passengers would have sustained serious injuries, and many in first class would likely have perished in the impact. Also, for the first time in such a test, it was shown that bracing for impact was indeed a good idea. This was proven with those crash test dummies who either had their head between their knees and hugging their legs, or those with their head placed on the seat back in front of them and their hands behind their heads. It was clear that those who had been positioned to brace for impact minimized the damage to their lumbar spine and were also protected from flying debris. However, there were doubts about the scientific validity of the experiment, given that an almost 50-year-old aircraft design was used. The test was also forbidden from being done in the US. The Boeing 727 used in the test was owned by Singapore Airlines and was chosen because it was cheap. Channel 4 confirmed that the pilot parachuted out before impact. The B-6112 nuclear weapon crash test. The purpose of this test was to allow engineers to examine specific and important safety features built into a nuclear weapon. A B-6112 test unit was slammed at high speed into a target thus mimicking a high-speed accident with a nuclear warhead. 
The test was a collaboration between Sandia National Laboratory and the Los Alamos National Laboratory. It took place on a 10,000-foot purpose-built rocket sled track at Sandia's test facility on October 5, 2016 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It was quite similar in some ways to the crash test of the F-4 Phantom, also done by Sandia Labs and discussed earlier in this video. The high-fidelity unit contained standard components that make up a missile-type weapon, comprising explosives and other hazardous materials. However, the test weapon didn't contain any enriched uranium or plutonium as a nuclear missile would have. The complex forward ballistic test used rocket motors to accelerate the sled along the track, simulating a free-flight crash. The test unit carried an internal data recorder, hardened so it could measure what happened during the impact and gather data to validate computer models. The recorder itself was an engineering feat, as it had to be very fast and handle vast amounts of data, as well as fit into a small space. The recorder design was so successful that it would be used in future tests. The test allowed engineers to examine safety features inside the weapon that prevents inadvertent nuclear detonation. This type of so-called abnormal environment test is performed to benchmark the performance of safety features designed into weapons. It was considered a success. <laughs>